Guys and girls, welcome. It's Junior from Comics Remix, and I'm here with a very lovely guest, Miss Karen Ashley. Karen, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. I'm happy to be here. How are you enjoying Chicago so far? So far, so good. This is a great city, and I'm glad to be back in it. That's awesome. So, obviously, you're most known for your role as Aisha the Yellow Ranger. Yeah, yeah. Which, you know, <laughs> if, I, in my opinion, if it wasn't for that, I know. you know, we wouldn't be sitting here right now. Right, right, but exactly. uh, how'd that role come about for you? You know what? I actually went to an open call audition. A friend of mine told me about it, and it was in the newspaper, and I, I was the only person, I think, in the world who didn't know about Power Rangers. No. So, yeah, seriously, I had wow. no clue what the show was about. And so I went, and there was a line, like, wrapped around the building. And luckily, the guy in front of me knew everything about Power Rangers, and so he was very happy to tell me about it. And, I mean, a few hours later, and my Power Education, my Power Rangers education was intact, I went and auditioned, and a couple of days later, they uh, flew me to L.A. to audition for producers, and by that afternoon, I was a Power Ranger. So it was like four days, my life changed. So you don't think if it was for that fan, you probably wouldn't be sitting here? You know what? He gave me so much insight. Like, I think it, it definitely helped. You know, I knew there was teenagers, but I didn't know that they were, you know, I had no clue they were superheroes. I had no clue that each one of them wore color. So, yeah, he totally helped me out. Whoever you are, wherever you are, it's because of you. Yes. I thought well overdue. Thank I mean, way overdue. Thank you. And you don't remember his name, huh? No, no. I mean, because I. The know, unsung hero. The unsung <laughs> fan. Yeah, yeah. I just remember he had on a karate gi. That's all yeah. I remember. What happened to that guy? <laughs> maybe, maybe he became a VR trooper or something. Maybe. <laughs> I know the VR troopers, so oh, yeah. yeah, no, uh, but. Okay, okay. Well, so you've <laughs> co written two films as well. Yes. You've co written um, Devon's Ghost and Unto yes. Three. How challenging is it to write a film as opposed to just star in one? It's so challenging because it's like, you know, you think of these characters, you think of the ideas, and when you're a writer, you really got to pick your own work apart. You really got to, like, overanalyze it, and then sometimes you get on set and, you know, the director may change something, or, you know, you and you're like, no, that's not what, you know. So it's just one of those things, but it's such a, a, a great experience to see your thoughts come to life you right. know and I'm currently just started pre-production on my next film and another picture I wrote and it's one of those things that I, I I get excited just like seeing these characters come to life seeing the wardrobe seeing just the actor when they get the script their excitement to read it mm -hmm. so it's really really cool I can imagine how that goes man uh, so let's talk a little bit about uncensored radio yeah Oh, all right. It looks like I hit a good spot there. Uh, for those that aren't familiar with it, can you tell us a little bit about it? You know, an Uncensored Radio was a, a radio, a blog, like a blog talk radio show that I did for about two years. And then I kind of switched over and started doing Uncensored Talk, which became a web series. But it was one of those things where I had always wanted to get into radio and I always wanted to do it. And it's, it's a challenge because in, as an actor, you can use your facial expressions, your body. But when you're on the radio, you really have to, all you have is your voice, and you have to keep people enthused, and, and you got to keep their attention. And so for me, it was great. It was like acting class all over again. So, um, but I like it. It was talk radio. We got to talk about anything, and like the title said, it was uncensored, so there was no rules. You know, you could say whatever you want and feel however you want, and there were quite a, a number of times we'd get into arguments, but it was all in good fun, you know. Right. Well, that sounds good. It's a good way to express yourself. Yeah. Um, so next year, we obviously have the new Power Rangers movie coming out. You know, how excited for you are there? I'm so excited. I'm so excited for the fans right. because for them, they've been waiting. I mean, it's been 20 years. This, you know, last year was 20 years since the original Mighty Morphin Power Ranger movie came out. So it's 20 years too long. Saban should have put out a, a new movie way before now. But I'm so glad. And the cast seems cool. And the, the fans are excited, and, and, you know, who knows? I mean, I, I, I'm sure Lionsgate will do a good job. Are you excited? I'm excited. Of course I am. Like, I'm actually wanting to see it. I'm going to have to, like, go and sneak in the theater and, like, watch, like, a fangirl. So Saban won't give you, like, comp tickets or something? They don't give us because nothing. You help <laughs> make it. I mean, you know what I mean? If it's oh, he, just, he just gives us a headache. He, oh, he, well, he does. We didn't get anything. This this helmet was made by a fan. Customs? No. Okay. A girl by the name of Jessica. Okay. The, the, the morpher a fan gave to me, we, like, literally didn't made no money. We, you know, he made $3 billion, and we just, the, what we got was the, the fame from being on the show. So, no, he doesn't send us comp tickets. <laughs> Saban, you're slipping, man. No, so, he slipped a long time ago, but that's another story. <laughs> we won't get to that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. So, okay, I'm not going to take up any of your time. I'll ask you one last question. Yeah. What is something about you that the fans won't find out on social media? 
Oh my gosh. I don't know because I am pretty much an open book. Um, I don't know. I, I, you know, a lot of people don't know that I'm half Mexican and half black. So yeah, I'm biracial. Yeah, and I'm very proud of that. Um, so yeah, not a lot of people know that. So now I gotta follow that up. Have you been to Pilsen yet? No, no. Alex I gotta. Broke. <laughs> Come on, man. I like gotta, yeah. some. That's like some of the best Mexican food Is you'll it ever here? have. Here? Yeah. Oh my God. Okay, you gotta You're write here that all down. Weekend, right? Yes. You gotta write it down. All right. I'm, I guess I'm gonna have to bring you some lunch tomorrow. Oh. See, I'm on a diet. I'm like, too, I'm getting, I'm, I mean, yeah, hey, okay, well, you can yeah. you say no to, like, authentic? No, Mexican? no, you, you can't. can't. You, you can't. It's, you can't. it's unheard of. I, all right, it's, here's it's, it's rude. How's it? <laughs> I won't bring you a big platter. Okay, perfect. I'll bring you a smaller yes, one. Yes, please do. Okay, yes, awesome. please do. Please so thank you so much for your time, Karen. <laughs> I really enjoyed this. Thanks, guys.